I have printed out pictures from online and different uh, screenshots from the show to get every angle possible to figure out how to bring this piece from an animated version into something that I can actually put on and also put around my arm as opposed to having to amputate my arm and reattach an arm. What I like to do is to just start out with paper and just try some different shapes. You can actually even print out life-size versions of some of those photos if you have a good angle and then kind of design around that. See how it fits on your arm or whatever body part you're working on. Um, here is one of the mock-ups I created at some point that I could actually put my arm into and just kind of start seeing how the pieces fit together. Sorry, I hit my microphone there. See how the pieces fit together and fit on your arm. Now I have the actual, the first version of this arm that I created. It was okay, but I wasn't entirely happy with sort of um, the, how unrefined it is and how some of the shapes just are not that great. And overall the design, I didn't do as much research at that point, so I just kind of went with it just to get something, get something done. And um, the arm, shoulder piece here actually fits pretty well. This is made from some really strange materials. I had no idea what I was doing at this point. I used aluminum foil just that I found in my kitchen and I kind of did a like a fabric mache type thing over the crunched up aluminum foil. So this is actually rather moldable which is kind of cool although it does kind of mess up the paint finish when you do that. But this fits pretty well. I had everything on elastic which I have since had to take apart because I cannibalized the sleeve that I used on this first one for my second one. Anyways, all these parts fit together fairly well, but there were some mobility issues for sure. It's kind of just clunky. It is not um, at, in any way a delicate rendition of this piece. Uh, most of the pieces just are elastic together and then you just slide them on, which it works pretty well, but this thing is really huge. Again, it's not refined. Also, the finish I used on the first version was a polyurethane and with time it has definitely yellowed. So I would not recommend finishing your pieces with that unless you would like to have a yellowed finish. Because this was so bulky, it needed a pretty extensive support system. So this has been cut off. Again, I cannibalized the sleeve off of this one so it's disassembled now. Uh, but this just velcros on. And then this is what was supporting the arm. It really did not stay on well. It wanted to sag down. I was constantly pulling it up. Again, the design just wasn't quite there. The hand was just completely joined together, which worked okay. My hand does fit into this. I cut out spaces for the fingers so that I'd have really good mobility. However, it was kind of at the expense of the keeping the effect that you more see in the show. The problem with the version in the show, well one thing, it changes from frame to frame as to how it was drawn at that point. So there's all sorts of variety, I kind of just have to pick what sort of version that you think is going to work in real life and that looks pretty decent. The belt and the shoes for the first version are pretty simple, not the best. And I made this out of some microfiber that I had lying around and along with a belt that I already had, just simple. Velcro on. I added a little pouch because I wanted to be able to carry my phone around with me um, at the con that I was at. Um, it's okay, but it just doesn't really fully capture the look um, of the belt in the show. These shoes are probably the weakest element of this costume. I used just some old shoes that I was going to throw away, um, added some fabric at the top to create sort of the open boot effect and then just painted the soles and the paint is just peeling off and whatnot and the finishes are inconsistent so this was definitely something I wanted to upgrade for version 2. Again, patterning stage. This was an excellent use of my body cast model here too. I wrapped her up, was able to draw on much more easily actually than if it was on myself like the first time. Um, then I cut out those shapes that I drew and I cut out a foam version to see how, um, how everything works, if it fits. 
heat mold it because um, there's only so much you can tell from the flat pattern until you actually heat mold it into the shape and then try that on. I'm probably going to hit my mic again. I apologize. And this is what I call the stormtrooper stage. I had a pattern that I knew would work. I neatened it up a little bit, created a uh, just a brown paper version instead of using the original, which can get a little clunky and it doesn't necessarily lie perfectly flat. So this allows you to have a nice flat version that can be pinned onto the foam, trace it out, and then cut it with a nice sharp knife. So we had the patterning foam tester. Then there was just a whole lot of 3D modeling going on. I really like the 3D modeling method because I can see how these pieces work in relation to each other without actually having to do a mock-up of each one. It's much more precise. Um, it is extremely time consuming, but it was a great project to really dive into learning 1-2-3D design, which I did all of the design work for this on. Um, I also use this as an opportunity to test some filaments in real world applications. So let me show you what I ended up with. The first piece that I did in 3D modeling and printing was this part here. And I had labored and just kept trying to figure out how to capture the look that's in the anime. Uh, but make it actually work on my arm and also to find kind of the middle ground between all the different versions you see depending on which scene you're watching. Um, this is created as two parts. Well, it was actually four parts, but once the, once the uh, button pieces were glued to the armband, then it's two separate pieces that can be separated as needed if you need to get to the fasteners underneath or adjust anything. Um, this has a magnet here, which I wrapped in um, some fabric just so that the magnet wouldn't get completely stuck on and actually rip itself off of the piece instead of allowing you to um, adjust and remove the piece as needed. So that one attaches to the opposing magnet here. And this worked extremely, extremely well for keeping the upper portion here in place, but allowing me to have, whoops, allowing me to have some full mobility there and move my arm around as needed. The filament used here was a Petchy. It is rigid. There's a, you know, a little bit of give to it, but it is definitely more on the rigid side. The piece here, on the other hand, is in semi-flex. So this has a lot of flex to it. Interestingly enough, I was able to finish all of the pieces using the same method, regardless of whether they were in a more rigid petchy or the super flexible, pretty much indestructible semi-flex. So that was a really interesting discovery. I did not expect to be able to use the same methods for those. I didn't think that the paints would withstand that flexing, um, that they would adhere properly, but it went pretty, pretty easily with that. The other pieces here, of course the elbow piece, really simple. This attaches on with some Velcro to the elbow along with a little elastic strap just to keep these pieces together. This is again the semi-flex, so it is quite durable. Um, I will go into a little more detail on the actual final coloration, finishing and all that in just a moment. Uh, fastening was important on this because I wanted to be sure that nothing would be falling off. I didn't want to be fiddling with my costume while I was wearing it. There's a lot of hot glue going on here for sure because I was running short on time. Everything just needed to get stuck on and not come off. So there is Velcro to go across here. There is a magnet, which is then going to assist with keeping the top piece of the bracer in place. Now the strapping is very simple. It did not need to be as extensive as for my first version because this piece fits better. It is fairly lightweight and it is um, better designed up in this area so it doesn't kind of stick up as much. The sleeve I just cut off of a dry fit shirt. It works really well. It's comfortable. This guy just goes up here. Strapping goes right across here.
And this holds it nice and securely. So once it's fastened, you can just do a final little adjust to make sure everything is in place. It's important to make sure that this magnet here does attach because otherwise the shoulder will fall down. But the magnet uh, is excellent for keeping this, but I can still move my arm just fine. And you see it just stays right on this. Now I did coat the inside um, with a little bit of a scrap fabric so that it wouldn't scratch up the finish on here as it moves around. And that worked awesome. There's not a single scratch after wearing this all day. I used uh, semi-flex for this piece here and I made a really interesting discovery. I had no idea this is, was going to work, but it turns out that parts that you 3D print flat using this pattern, you can then heat mold much like foam. It is a little more difficult to heat mold than foam because it does have to get quite hot and you have to do it multiple times. Um, and it maybe doesn't have quite the range of flexibility, especially at this thickness. This was a fairly thick part. I want it to have some substance to really reflect um, the way that it looks in the anime. But I was able to heat mold this one in much the same way as this foam tester piece. It was really awesome and I was quite, quite excited. Uh, oh, and by the way, these little pieces here, just little finishing touches that you can see uh, pretty much in just like one of the pictures here. You'll see that there's those little, I guess, wire casings or whatever. Um, I just found this material at the craft store. I'm not really sure what it's for, but it works perfectly uh, for this costume. Um, so the elbow piece just slips right on. Um, I decided to actually put it a little bit further up on my arm as opposed to having it on my elbow so that it doesn't interfere uh, with the motion of my arm and also it kind of just fills in the gap because when I designed this to be sort of proportionate to me and to also reflect the way that it looks in the anime as much as possible, this ended up stopping pretty high up on my arm. So by placing the elbow piece here, it really keeps the proportion and the spacing. You'll see as I put on the bracer pieces here. Now I'm going to grab the hand before I put that on because I did add a little extra something in here on the hand that I definitely didn't have anything like in the first version. It is extremely simple, uh, just with some electronic parts I had lying around from a previous project. This is just some LED strip lights and just super simple soldering to a longer piece of wire and then uh, just a little battery pack here. I don't have any kind of switching. It's only flickering because I didn't have this plugged in well. Um, it would be awesome like you know if it turned on and off as I you know, did my acting or whatever but I did not have time to do anything that complex so it was like very simple or not at all. I went with very simple. So I left a space when I designed this for a battery pack to just sit in here. That worked out perfectly. So let me put this on. Uh, of course there's Velcro here that attaches to this. I tried to add um, two different fastenings for most pieces just to ensure that nothing is shifting or trying to fall off if say one piece comes unstuck, which, um, Overall, this costume held up really, really, really well. There was maybe one piece of Velcro around here that did come unstuck a little bit. It needed to have been double glued, and I had only used the adhesive that was on the industrial strength Velcro for that piece, so it did come unstuck, but because I have double fastenings, nothing actually fell off. Um, so then the hand came out a little bit too tight. I did not have time to reprint it. Um, if I had, I would have definitely scaled it up a little bit. The bulk of the glove, which I just got just some super easy, super comfortable Gorilla Grip gloves for a few dollars. These work perfectly for um, actually attaching the hand pieces to. But I will show you, this is a little bit challenging to get on, but I did still manage to fit the LED lights in there. So I ended up gluing everything onto the glove just because that helped to hold everything in place and keep it sturdy while I'm trying to force my hand <laughs> to get it all the way into these pieces. There we are. This was printed as, let's see, this was one piece, this was a piece, this was a piece, and 
I glued them together with a mix of hot glue and some contact cement. This is all created out of semi-flex. So the pieces are very durable. It's pretty comfortable. Because it's a little bit too small, um, the knuckles don't line up with my knuckles, so I don't have as much mobility as I did in the first one. I also did not cut out uh, the pieces here that would have allowed more mobility, but I think that was a reasonable sacrifice because this more closely matches the way that the glove tends to look in the anime. So this battery pack is going to just tuck away in here. Nice and neat. The endings are a little bit sloppy. Again, this was done in the wee hours of the morning and I just had to make it work. So I just glued some Velcro inside out on this to cover up the wires. And the this part here that is kind of dispersing the light a little bit so you don't just see just the LEDs. This is just some scraps from the shoes which I printed out of Ninja Flex. So I just cut those out and glued it over top of the strips. Now the sleeve has more Velcro to cover the end of that glove. The magnet here, which is going to hold the top piece in place, Velcros to the sleeve. And then this piece will simply go over top. I did add Velcro to all of the edges so that they wouldn't pop up too much. Um, I had to add some backing fabric here because as I was piece putting these pieces together, I noticed that the Velcro was showing through and I did not like that. So I just glued some scrap fabric in here so that it is a nice clean line in each of these um, cutout areas. Fits on here just like this. So I have full mobility of my arm like this, or nearly full. <laughs> my fingers, eh, I, can, I can hold stuff like a bag and I can wiggle my fingers, but that's pretty much it. It's not particularly functional. But it looks pretty good. It looks pretty much like it, uh, it does in the anime. So it's worth the sacrifice of, you know, use of my right hand. Sure, I'm right-handed, but this is a great opportunity to practice being more ambidextrous. I had a lot of fun creating the shoes for this costume. I used some old boots that I was going to throw away. Um, but instead, I just cut out the parts that I didn't need and used a whole bunch of black shoe polish to change the tone of the faux leather, and then redesigned the strapping to resemble the, the strapping that you see in the film. Um, the shoe, so this is where I had the most fun. <laughs> Took a little bit of artistic liberty here. You don't actually ever really see the bottoms of his shoes, I don't believe, but I decided, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there was a blood seal on the bottom? Sure, nobody else is gonna see it, but I know it's there. <laughs> um, so. It printed out pretty well, and like I wore this all day. There is no wear and tear on the bottom, so the Ninja Flex for shoe soles, very durable, very functional, non slip. Uh, the only place that I had some issue was my design was slightly flawed, it didn't fit perfectly onto the shoe. I couldn't be bothered to redo it because I needed to make the rest of the costume, so I just filled that in um, on the cracks there with a little bit of hot glue. However, this uh, faux leather that the shoe was made out of decided it doesn't like hot glue, so it's been trying to peel away a little bit. I touched it up with some contact cement, so it's fine now. I mean, it's just a distressed look, guys. It's no problem whatsoever. On the inside, I just glued down the lining to kind of have all finished edges. I don't like it when you have like everything look great on the outside, but then peeking out is like a raw edge. It kind of just ruins the effect for me. New version of the belt. I went with foam on this because I did not want to actually have to like buy real leather or whatever and I had already developed the technique for making it have this coloration so I used the same process on the foam other than that I had to add you know a base coat of brown that the shoe already had and then I still just went in with the shoe polish over top of this and um, you just kind of put it on in layers and when you have it all layered out then you can go back in with a little bit of a little spritz of water polish it out and you get just this nice soft uh, kind of semi-gloss like just 
mild sheen to it. That's really nice. I like the look and I like that it matches the boots, although that wasn't really quite necessary. Uh, the little uh, pieces here are just some googly eyes that I had painted. Um, and the belt buckle, okay, I could have just bought a belt buckle, but I, the store was already closed when I wanted to do this. So <laughs> I just made my own belt buckle out of some foam, some glue, and some spray paint and rub and buff and just like this really heavy gauge wire that I had lying around from something else. I think it turned out pretty well. So let me go ahead and see if I can put on this belt. You will be able to see exactly how much or little uh, function I have with this hand on. Not too bad, right? So, I mean, it's a functioning buckle. We can undo everything. The funny thing is I noticed in uh, my reference photos, there does not seem to be any sort of place to actually open the belt that he is wearing. So I designed this area here to just slide apart to reveal the seam. This is at the back. Open the Velcro. Mm -hmm. All right, so Velcro attaches. That gives you a little bit of adjustability, so if you eat a really big meal, hey, you can loosen it a little bit. <laughs> that slides over to cover the seam. It is also fabric backed. I just used, um, I can't remember if I used spray adhesive or I think it was spray adhesive, um, but it gives it um, a little bit more durability. It gives it a pretty good feel. I don't like when something doesn't feel right, even if it looks okay. I like it to actually feel pretty like, much like what it should also. And all of this is just foam. I mean, this the strap here and everything, just um, kind of pattern it out using the same method as uh, the arm. I wrapped my waist in some plastic wrap and some tape and I drew on where I needed it took it off, cut it out, and then just traced that onto foam so that I know it's going to be shaped to my waist and not um, have any like weird gaps or anything. And it did, it worked out quite well. So belt is done. What am I missing? My shoes, okay, putting on the shoes. Okay, so next off, I'm gonna go into a little more detail on how I actually finished all of these pieces because when these come off the printer, they do not look that great. So, finishing. Everything starts with sanding, removing support structure. Yes, some of these pieces do in fact require support structure or they will not print properly. Um, of course, the fingers, I just stood those vertically to print so there was no support required there but they still need cleanup. There's little strings, there's some texture to it. The Semiflex prints really nicely, but I really wanted this super smooth kind of artificial look to it. Um, I was going for a mix between the drawn version, like the animated version, and how something would be in real life. So this is sort of my compromise. Everything needed to be smooth, and then it needed various coats of primer. I love, love, love filler primer. It's an automotive filler primer. You spray it on there. Doesn't take too long to dry. You can kind of sand it even while it's still a little bit, still a little bit wet. And it sands very easily. It allows you to see any areas that you missed in your sanding and filling um, in previous stages. And it really does like fill in some of those minor crevices and save you uh, sanding away too much of the material Especially on you know thin pieces like this, if you sand it down too much, well, you know what? It's gonna be too thin and it might just break. While hot glue does work reasonably well depending on the application with the Semiflex, a better option is actually wood glue. That worked really well for kind of filling in some of these areas that wanted to crack a little bit. Um, and then after those were securely in place and no longer cracking, then the filler primer and then uh, the second coat of primer is just regular automotive primer and it allows you to then wet sand it, get that really, really, really smooth finish. The final coat of spray paint um, is just, uh, hmm, where is it? Well, anyways, it's a spray enamel. It looks really nice. It was in the col color that I wanted because I wanted sort of a, like a blue tone gray. 
Um, and then the, what I would say with that, don't be in a rush when you are spray painting. Um, you can see some areas here where I was running out of time and I was like, oh, well, I'll just spray it a little thick here because I have a little imperfection I missed earlier. Or, oh, sure, the can says recoat within an hour or wait 40 hour, 48 hours, but who has 48 hours? And yeah, I forgot to put the second coat on because I had to go to work or whatever. So what happens when you do that is the paint doesn't really stick to itself as well and it bubbles up. And if you put it on too thick, you just end up getting these drips and imperfections that you spend more time fixing than if you had just waited till you had time to do it properly from the start. I put in all that work sanding it and then I kind of screwed up some areas just in that painting stage. But it's fine. It's a learning process. It's always a learning process. Now, the next stage is distressing. Now, I debated for quite some time if I wanted to keep this more of a cartoon version or to m do more of a realistic uh, type version and I ended up going somewhere in between. So my compromise was in some of these areas, in areas that would be shadowed, I used just some gloss acrylic paints to add those sort of um, hard lined shadows that you see, you know, kind of looking at like reference photos here. And I added those shadows in, in a lot of different places here. And um, so that gave me kind of that cartoony version. From there, it was just not bringing out the details that I wanted to show. It's like I went to all the trouble of designing in these details, like the little bolts here and whatnot, and they just didn't pop uh, with just the base coat of the gray spray paint and the, um, the acrylic uh, shadows. So I went back to the shoe polish, and this time I added in some rub and buff. Now, when I was experimenting with rub and buff on some kind of pieces that didn't work out, just to see how um, the finish would behave, the issue I ran into, I have this um, pewter rub and buff, um, is the work time was just too short. I couldn't spread it thin enough to be able to have my base coat show through. Um, it was just going to be like a straight up shiny silver, um, it's kind of streaky and it just wasn't the look I was going for. So it's like, hey, let me just dilute this. So I got some um, clear shoe polish and I used a brush and a mix of like some shop towels or whatever to distress some areas to add some grime and whatnot, but to still allow um, the base coat and the shadowing effects that I had done, allow those to show through. Um, and I think that it was fairly effective. I like the feel of the rub and buff mixed with shoe polish. Now, same as if you were polishing your shoes, you can put it on, let it dry, and then just give it a little bit of a buff down to bring out some of that shine again. It's not a super high gloss finish, but it is sort of like a semi-gloss. And then in some areas there's more gloss because um, the base coat is a gloss enamel. And that gives you this variation of uh, kind of visual textures, some areas more glossy, some areas more dull, as if some areas kind of got more grimy, more worn down a little bit. Um, and then uh, it just kind of helped to also disguise some of those areas uh, where I had kind of messed up the underpainting and didn't have time to sand it all down and start over. This area here, you know, I kept it a little more minimal and in areas where maybe I'm leaning up against stuff or whatever, um, I made that a little bit more dirty and distressed, especially on the hand. I mean, okay, yes, if you're using your hand and you're touching stuff, it's gonna probably get pretty dirty. So I kind of added some grime around the fingers and whatnot. This also um, gave me a chance to, you know, cover up any areas that didn't come out quite perfectly. You know, it's there's never enough time to make anything perfect, but this distressing stage gives you a chance to bring out your details and kind of minimize the visual effect of the flaws of anything. The fingers here, I'll show you this. They're just attached with some elastic. I cut little holes in each one, much like my reference photos, threaded the elastic through, and then actually glued the pieces to the glove in the end because I wasn't gonna be able to have full mobility anyway, and it's just nice to have those finger pieces fully in place, but still have that elastic there to 
ensure that nothing falls off if the glue were to fail. And it also just kind of looks good. The cloak, I patterned again using my body cast mannequin over here. Very useful for that. The method I used was to take some, just some cheap scrap muslin type stuff and pin it on inside out. Like if you're slip covering something, you just pin it together along the lines you need to make it perfectly fitted to your body. This is my pattern here for all the different parts. This was for the hood and I just sharpied on my lines in case I ever want to make another one, you know? Got my full length here. I liked the full length look better than kind of some of the cropped ones that you see. That's just my personal preference. And you just sew it all together. It actually came out really well like the first time because I had already made the cotton version so I knew it was going to fit. I didn't want to waste my fabric. Now the emblem here I just put on with some top stitching um, with two different layers. There's like a really stiff um, like felt type material underneath to give the applique some, uh, some bulk so it doesn't pucker up and whatnot. And then I topped it with some uh, like linen type fabric to keep with the, the linen kind of theme that I had going on, like keep the texture similar so they go together. It was kind of challenging, just I don't think I was using the right stitch or whatever. I haven't really done applique type stuff before, but it turned out fine in the end. I just, I lined it with the same fabric because I had enough fabric. So it's like, why use a different fabric if I have plenty of the fabric that I bought for the cloak itself? So let me just give this a try on. I actually made the cloak after the first arm, but before starting on the second arm. So I was just like, I just want a cloak. I'm gonna make this cloak whether I <laughs> remake the costume or not. I have, my mic back here so it's adding a little bulk but this cloak fits awesome like if you tighten it around me here you can see it just it is custom I mean it, it's made to fit me exactly the sleeves are exactly where I wanted them I like the weight of this linen fabric it feels good and it hmm, doesn't have any extra bunching anywhere as a small short person you get very tired of things not fitting well so i just get very excited when it's something that i made myself and that fits me perfectly it's very exciting so that is the end of this costume i believe i don't think that there will be a version three because i am pretty satisfied with this one it's never going to be perfect but i would like to move on to some other projects now I'm getting a little bit hot now <laughs> But I will say it was a pretty okay costume to wear all day. It stays on well. I mean, this piece here with just one single strap, which eh, you can see it from the back, but that didn't bother me. It holds it in place just fine without the need for extensive uh, strapping because it does fit. So if you can get that design right and then design these pieces that fit with it well to not be pulling on it, pulling on it in any sort of strange ways, then that kind of minimizes your need for extra support like this one here. Even with all of this strapping, it just, it just didn't stay in place. This was a definite improvement in that realm. So yeah, peace out.